Hello, Dominic. Thank you for a very short notice being willing to step in and help us when Tara's out tonight. I appreciate it so much. Dominic, Dominic Noble, of course, who uh, has the YouTube show The Lost in Adaptation, where he looks at uh, differences between films and the books they're based on, plus other various and sundry things that come up, like sometimes reading smut to the internet. Yeah, that's 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 a fun legacy to leave behind. <laughs> Man, you want to talk about the look at my legacy is is this. Yes, you have poop and public nudity. And meth. Don't forget the meth. Lots and lots of meth. It's funny because we because we don't talk on Discord unless we're doing this. So I can I, I can see if I scroll up just a little bit, I can see all the insane crap you subjected me to last time. Yeah, you got that forever. That that's 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 yours. Free and clear. Okay, me. People are. They want to know what your shirt says. My life mantra. <laughs> they. I found this. It was mostly only being sold in women's sizes, so I spent ages tracking down one for men because I was like, you know what? I deserve positive <laughs> affirmations and tacos as well. <laughs> oh, all right. So let me see. It it has been a fucking week, man. Yeah, the night hurricane out of nowhere. Yes, nature. It it feels like every time we talk, nature is trying to kill you in some way or another. Right. Like it was. Um. What I, I told folks this earlier. Uh, what happens when a storm comes through an area? Uh, animal shelters have to clear out because after a storm, there's going to be a bunch more animals they're going to find. That's what happens when you know bad storm goes through. So they move the animals to other shelters and they moved, they took the animals from uh, Tampa, Florida area where a storm was coming and they thought, let's send them someplace. There's not going to be a storm like Charleston, South Carolina. So Sarah, she works over at the animal shelter and they get, they, they got like a hundred cats. They had to process in one day. In any other circumstances, a hundred cats is heaven, but that sounds like hell in that particular oh, delivery man. Oh, but it's it gets better because they sent them here to avoid a storm. Right, and then and they have the, to move them all again. The hurricane came through Tampa, circled around, and went, you know what? I'm not done! And came right back up through Allison, South Carolina. <laughs> so... <laughs> So did you? Did they have to move all the cats out again? No, it was too late. It was too short notice. Uh, the cats just had to weather, weather the storm. Yeah, well, I mean, they got a big old brick building. They were taken care of, but still, the, we they, they weren't expecting to to have as many lost animals after this one. And they, we didn't. We didn't have it that bad, fortunately. Some folks did we, around the area. We were we got fortunate. But. So it's been a week. Uh, let's. See get the intro going because it's been a week and we even of course we've got a hurricane story to kick us off this week Joy. of course we do each week Catherine the radio dead air audience go out the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and uh, this one of course comes from Florida it could only Florida. <laughs> you're like you're exhausted already. You know, when you hear Florida, you just you have to lower your expectations for the human race. It really is the wang of America. Um so uh Florida CEO faces backlash after asking employees to work through Hurricane Ian and to bring pets, family to the office. Now, for posterity, I want to note that Hurricane Ian was a Category 4 hurricane. That's one down from the absolute worst, and it was gigantic. So that, that's, that's the, the starting point. I believe she used the term nothing burger. Florida-based company is under fire after its CEO suggested employees bring their families and pets to the office and work through Hurricane Ian. Despite a declared state of emergency and numerous evacuation, or evacuation orders through the area, 
Joy uh, Gendusa, the CEO of Postcard Mania, a postcard marketing firm with a 69,000 square foot main campus in Clearwater, Florida, which already pause. Yeah. A postcard marketing firm. This was not an essential service that he was worried about like robbing the people of if they no, had to just, shut it's down a she. and no no they they weren't they were she wasn't worried about it. no this was not an essential they they, they, they weren't were feeding she, what for for postcards, for postcards she asks her employees to risk the lives of their children and pets right it's not like they weren't feeding babies they weren't curing cancer they were sending out advertisements um the uh, uh, Joy Jandusa you know, address employees <laughs> and set our expectations for the then upcoming category four storm. Uh, if you want to leave your home and you're being told to leave your home, you feel like you should, you have no place to go. Postcard mania is probably the safest place to be in Florida. Anyway, bring your pets, bring your kids, bring everybody to postcard mania. I'll tell your staff to go to the office. Uh, Jandusa turned the meeting from the passenger seat of her car. And called uh, the the storm an overhyped quote nothing burger. It's not going to be that bad. Obviously, you feeling safe and comfortable is of the utmost importance. But I honestly want to continue to deliver, and I I want to have a good end of quarter. And when it turns out, think, yeah, with the wording, you could almost convince yourself that she's just saying we have a strong building here. You can come and you know shelter from the storm in this building. But then she just sli- she slips in there, you know, I'd I really love to continue our service. So it's like, oh, so we wouldn't be sheltering here, we'd be working here. Right. With and pets and children. Uh, which, I mean, think about that. Think, think about, you already go to work, especially if you work from home, you already have to deal with pets and children. But imagine loading your pets and children, because if there's one thing we know, pets love being moved. They love getting into those crates. It was my cats are just like so joyful to leap into those tiny crates and leave the house. That's not a terrible scratching battle every time. You're gonna load up angry pets, scared children, and you're going to haul them to your office, which is apparently a postcard making factory. I worked in a place that made boxes at one point. Those fuckers are noisy. Yeah, and and you're just gonna be like, yeah, this will be great. This this will work. We'll 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 work with no troubles. And it'll be great. Um, was was she also going to be coming into the office, or was this to send the employees while she goes to her bomb shelter? No, she was. She called into the meeting while she was fucking evacuating. That that's I I that's the only thing I could think on this scenario that could make it any way better, and she did. It was low hanging fruit, and she still didn't do even that bare minimum human decency. <laughs> nope. Just, oh, she you'll was be evacuating fuck- her rich ass while asking the employees to die in a storm for the sake of fucking postcards. And I had to point out to people who weren't quite making this connection at the time: uh, Clearwater, Florida, is one of the main hubs. For Scientology. And yes, she is involved in Scientology. So that just another shit layer on the cake. Hmm. <laughs> on what level she is. Because you, you work your way up through that religion via monetary donations, don't you? Yeah. Well, the, it's, it's how, yeah. It, I mean, it's not like work your way up. It's how much money you can waste on it. You, 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 buy, you buy rank like the old British Empire. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> got to get on one of those space 747s or whatever well well she is the worst person i've ever heard of in my life really because there's way worse i mean it's, this it's it's the answer it's the leaving them to like calling them to say don't evacuate true. while she evacuates is true. just it's like of evil you know yeah. um well this one is not quite that bad but oh god stupid it's this almost offends me in that you would ex- i i want a higher tier of criminal i want i grew up watching shows like you know like law and order and then and all those it's just the, the shows are played out we have like these devilish fiends they had to catch with plans and 
they only got slipped up by little clues they left behind. And, you know, you, you thought, oh, wow, this is interesting. And, and then you have stuff like this guy, Massachusetts bank worker accused of forging $65,000 check to buy new BMW. Bank employee in Boston's Hyde Park neighborhood has been accused of forging a $65,000 check at the bank to buy himself a brand new BMW. Did he get the car though? Like, did did he ah! was this car in his possession when they found when they figured it out, or did he not even make it to the to the off the lot? That's um, the important thing. Let's see. Uh, on June sixteenth, the allegedly Ford check would. Ford check was used to buy a blue BMW X6. He got the car. You got to give him that. He got it. He got away with it for like a day. <laughs> Vehicle was registered and inspected on the same day. Bank officials contacted police on July 5th to report the che treasurer's check transaction. The attorney's office said bank officials provided police with a copy of the check signed by Evans. Evans was fired the very next day. It's you didn't exactly leave. You, know, you didn't exactly cover your trail very well here. You signed your own real ass name on your on your crime. Your crime. You filled out your information on it. <laughs> that's that's a literal paper trail that you left. He's and he's forty two, so this isn't like some like twenty year old kid. Yeah, and he, he's not like the standard sort of you know out of work meth addict that usually commits these insane crimes. This guy was working at the bank. He had a steady job, and he and knew like, how oh. the, he knew how the bank worked. Yeah, enough to forge it, but not enough to know this isn't going to work in the long term. Like, dude, if you want to just you know you can rent the car if you just want the experience of driving it around for a day. That's a lot cheaper than going to jail. Yes. <laughs> Sailor Tardis says, "Get in, loser. We're going to forge a check." Yeah. In a nice looking car, it's hideous. <laughs> you gotta get a like feel a car, at least make it a nice one. I love that you're offended by how the car looks. <laughs> it's, like, it's, just, it's just such a low, like, it's just kind of a depressing crime, you know? <laughs> a very obviously foiled crime to steal an ugly car. Just think. <laughs> like he's bad at crime, but, he, but what really gets you is he has no taste. <laughs> you have to wonder though, is this car now second hand? Now that it's been briefly stopped, you know, because they say as soon as you drive off the lock, it lo lot, it loses half its value. So <laughs> he may have the next person who gets to this car may be getting a big discount. Yeah. So I think this guy's this guy's an, uh, a very stupid hero. <sighs> well, hey, we got one in California. Ooh. I was about to say near you, but California's gigantic. Yeah. It is um, a big thick. This is for this is uh, San Francisco, um, and uh, this is uh, what in the living. This is not a kind of thing I would expect to happen in San Francisco, but it just goes to show you. Northern California schools cancel football following slave auction prank. Oh, my entire torso just tensed up. <laughs> Yuba City High School has canceled the remainder of its football season. Members of the team were filmed enacting a prank in which they appeared to, quote, auction off black teammates. The video showed members of River Valley High School's football team seeming to act out a slave auction of their black teammates. School district officials received the video uh, on Thursday. Yuba City Unified School District uh, superintendent called the video unacceptable and deeply offensive. Um, the students involved in the unfortunate and extremely distressing incident. That's a word for it. Were the black students in on it? Which is, I don't know, but that seems weird. And that really recontextualizes it. Because like, if it's just the white, if the white students were doing this without the, you know, the, the African-Americans knowledge, or uh, that's a full on hate crime. Like if it, it's just like if if the black students were in on it, it feels like that's kind of just really poor taste. Well, no, but, no, uh, it's still. I mean, because it's not like it's it, not, not like those. Because it, if you are of a group, one one of the uh, that is not, you know, one of the majorities. Just because you're cool with something happening, does not mean your vote overwhelm you know, overrides everybody else's involved. For sure. 
For sure. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting they don't mention that, though. They don't mention if this was, like, just a, like a, a... If it was like a a a prank on the black students, or the black students were pranking people by taking part in it. Like either way, yeah, don't 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 think those guys should be playing football together. It seems like they've got three brain cells between them. But what what I really enjoy about this is the framing of the article is because of this, the varsity football team no longer has enough members to play, and the rest of the season has been forfeited. So that's that's the important takeaway here. Not yeah. not that you have these kids who are like just casual fucking racism like it ain't no thing. No, no, it's the football season's canceled. That's the that's the headline. That's Were they expelled or were they just did they just get kicked off the football tournament? See, I don't think it says. Uh they were barred from competing for the rest of the football season. It didn't say anything about expelling them. But, uh it, I don't know, like, it reminds me of uh, some kids from my school were expelled because they got caught being filmed. Uh, they said, the, the news article that was written about it said they were fighting, but they were reenacting WWE re- wrestling, basically. And they got expelled. So they get, expe- they get expelled for fake wrestling moves. I think a slave auction is probably expulsion level bullshit. You'd, you'd think. You'd think, and yet... All right. We've got the next two are so similar and it's weird that they happen so close, but you know, it happens. Um, we are as a people, and I, I notice this a lot when I tweet on social media, reading comprehension is like a lost art. It, it is an occult skill. It is, it, it's a secret, you know, you know, initiation like some mason shit that because no one seems to be capable of doing it am i grumpy about the sort of thing yes it happens on my social media a lot but um historic long grove bridge hit again for the 41st time since 2020 if you're looking at that picture there mm-hmm. You'll see those two large gouges at the top of the bridge. That's because this is a... Uh, Let's see, Long Grove, where is it? They are so... Yeah, it's Illinois, yeah. Because I've seen that bridge. I went to visit um, someone in Chicago, and we saw... We went to... I saw saw that bridge. It it had just been hit with someone then as well, which was like (laughs) two years ago. Like this is like a historical bridge. They keep they keep raising money to fix it and restore it. And as soon as they do, some idiot with a truck doesn't look at the the weight limit sign and smashes the thing again. It's it's because the way we're, the historic stuff works. I know how it works in America. I don't know how it works elsewhere. But once something gets declared historic, it it has to be preserved in its current state. And this bridge, when it was built, was not like considering box trucks and large V. Ve- it was it's eight foot six inches. That's the clearance. It's not very big. So you're, but what they have coming up to this bridge, big flashing fucking lights, big sign, warning, clearance, you dumb fuck. And yet, one has to assume it's like super convenient. It's like the only bridge you're going to get for like 20 fucking miles. Because the only reason I can see why all these idiot truck drivers keep su- like suicide plowing into it. <laughs> Um, crash happened about 1 p.m. Monday. The driver was in a 15 foot box truck and tried to cross the bridge despite multiple warnings. To the eight foot six inch high clearance height. Yeah, box- you can see the truck in the video that's attached to it. the truck's stoked in. Like, that's not even just the top, that's like the, t- the top half of the truck has been bashed in. Oh, yeah, like, that was even close. That's where, where's let's let's uh skip along. Yep, that that that's that's uh that truck is fucked. That, that that is a fucked truck. Look at that. It, it's He's like I mean, I've we've all driven under something and ducked involuntarily inside a car because it looks like it's going to hit you. But like, the, it looks like the bridge was at the guy's eye level as he was approaching it. When does this fucker put on the brakes? No, I can make that. I can make that. It's, oh, and yeah, it's 
I'll just like, did you think you were going to limbo the fuck under it? What do the laws of physics have on me? I'm running late. <laughs> like, this shit's not Optimus Prime. It's not going to just get the fuck out. That's like, that's not how it works. The cartoon van from a uh, car from Who Framed Rob- Roger Rabbit. Just <laughs> breathing. Right? <laughs> just think short <sighs> thoughts. You'll be fine. So, my time is- 40 first time since 2020. This has been two years. Keep it's it been hit 41 times. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, what, that's more than... What is, I mean, I'm really bad at maths, but that's like, two, like one every two months. I'm, I'm very bad at math. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just ridiculous. I think the bridge is cursed. I think this is the like the bridge is the common denominator here. I think it's like it's it's got some sort of ancient fey curse on it. This 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 is probably like a freshwater thing. We didn't make fucking sacrifices to the pixies when we built this bridge. Are are you sure it's the bridge though? Because are you sure it's just the bridge? Because go to Fort Meade, Fort Meade, Florida. Um, please, Polk Sheriff. Do not ignore barricades at washed out bridge near Fort Meade. And they're not fucking kidding. The bridge she be gone. No that more bridge. Like, yeah, that that's the, the second half of the stand right there where the roads have disappeared. <laughs> like that's in 2012, like end of the world bridge breaking right there. Paul County Sheriff Grady Judd is asking motorists to heed warnings. Around a washed out bridge between Fort Meade and Bowling Green. The sheriff's office said barricades are in place to warn drivers that the bridge is out, but they are <laughs> driving around them and continuing on. What you need, okay, what you need is Jamie Lee Curtis to run up and down screaming, The bridge is out! The bridge is <laughs> out! You get it? The True Lies reference? Yes, yes. That's funny. The bridge is out. Yes, I, I, yeah. Um, there have already been a significant crash at the bridge. So the police office is putting up even oh. more barricades. How close is this to Illinois? Because it could be the same fucking drivers. It's Florida. It's a different, whole, totally other end of the country. I wouldn't, I, I'm still thinking they may have done a long, like a long road trip for these guys. They're just going around smashing bridges and falling off cliffs and shit. Like, it just, it, that is, the bridge is just, it stopped existing. That's yeah. how bad that is. But I love that the Are police, they, the, the, the cops option here is, what do we do about it? We put up more barricades. I mean, are people like going past the barricades, getting to the edge and then realizing their mistake? Or are they just like, wee! He's like, <laughs> wee! Over the edge, like, next person clongs along, wee! I'm pretty sure somebody thought they could jump it. Oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure somebody's like, oh yeah, I can I, I can dukes a hat. What? It's only like six feet. I can dukes a hazard that shit. I mean, you let enough people fall in, eventually the hole will fill up. <laughs> you go across the top of the idiots. <laughs> well, that's some out of the box thinking there. Yeah. I love, look, I kind of like the, the two policemen in the photos there are kind of looking into it like, yep, there goes another one. <laughs> Try to roll with it. That's Jesus Christ. Dukes of Hazard is not a tutorial. Yes, Sailor Tucker. It's not. It's, it's not. Uh, they need to go for medieval, put spikes on the front of the barricades. <laughs> Maybe put a couple of, you know, like fake severed heads. Like right uh, in. Oh, oh uh, in Gandalf there. Uh, right. You like shall not fuck with me! No. Um, I'm in no mood. Oh, the last one this week, however. Oh, so I was going to say, it's kind of a reflection of the U.S. Uh, road repair service that the, what, the 100-year-old wooden bridge, despite being crashed into 41 times, is still in better repair than this highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, just God. Um, All right, next one is from Mexico, and uh, I thought NFTs were over. I don't understand how they're still around. Oh, Dan also killed them. They back. They're I know, back right? Day. You thought you thought like I thought Dan just was the definitive. Like, if you go back and look at the Google search results, 
like the day Dan released that video, NFT started plummeting. Now, I, correlation I is not causation, but. I did specifically ask him about that when I met him at uh, Van Tasma's wedding, and he said that the, he actually posted the video then because he knew the stocks were going to do that and NFTs would be trending. So it was it, technically it was the other way around, but we can we can pretend he killed NFTs. Well, apparently he didn't kill him hard enough because this motherfucker, businessman who says he burned a ten million Frida Kahlo drawing, is under criminal investigation. The art collector allegedly destroyed the work to promote an NFT collection. Art collector and entrepreneur is under criminal investigation in Mexico for allegedly burning a Frida Kahlo. I think I'm saying that right. I might be saying that wrong. Kahlo or Kahlo? I think it's Kahlo. Maybe it's Kahlo. I used to watch... Uh, 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 oh no, my brain's going blank. Uh, Co Coco. Yeah. I used to watch Coco. Is, it, is that the name of the movie? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, I was going mad there. I keep wanting to say um, Enchanto, but that's the other one. Um, let's try. Martin Mubarak said he had burned a drawing, torn the pages of one of uh, Kahlo's diaries that was believed to be worth 10 million in order to promote the 10,000 NFTs he created of the piece. So what he did to make the NFTs more valuable was he destroyed the real one. He destroyed an irreplaceable. Yeah work of art by one of the greatest artists who ever of the modern era like, yeah I, I, you know what? you've shown me some stuff on this show some the stuff that has like shocked me or disgusted me i have never felt more rage at something you've shown me than this article like this this does this doesn't upset me this makes me angry uh, much of the entire saga remains unclear. Mr. Mubarak, who is the founder of the company, company Frida.NFT, placed the drawing known as uh, Phantasmone Sinestros, I think I'm saying that right, in a martini glass and set it on fire at a public demonstration at his mansion in Miami in July while a mariachi band played in the background. <laughs> I think I'm going to make Tom explode. A video of the event posted on YouTube begins with a page of text that includes a quote from Mr. Mubarak in which he states, quote, I am proud to say this event will solve some of the world's biggest problems in honor of Frida Kahlo. Those that have never been truly spoken about an NFT. They, NFTs solve no problems. I, how does burning this down? The text also states the burning of the drawing by Mexico's most celebrated artist was done to, quote, revolutionize the art world, as well as for unfortunate children, battered women, and other less fortunate around the world to receive hope. What? Question mark in the middle of your whiteboard plan there, my, my dude. To, what? It's, what? Oh, yeah. my, my blood pressure. Like oh. I, I know when I don't when I when I had really bad money problems back in the day, I, I know what would have cheered me up, what would have made me think the world's going to get better, is seeing a famous piece of art burning a martini glass with a mariachi band. That would have solved it all. I would have been like, yes. One has to okay, so he owned he presumably purchased this diary. Mm -hmm. Like this is his property. Like, are you allowed to do that legally? Like, if you've purchased art, are you allowed to destroy it? Or surely it's still protected under some sort of art law. Like, right? Is that... Am I... Yeah, I, 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 I guess, but it. there's still... I mean, I don't... There's still in a criminal investigation. Now, I don't know if he's under a criminal... Uh, okay, in Mexico, the de deliberate destruction of artistic monument constitutes a crime in terms of the federal law on archaeological, artistic, and historical monuments and zones. Right, so yes, it, was in the, it was in the title, Criminal Investigation. Sorry, my brain yeah. was short-circuiting because of the sheer gall of this motherfucker. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, you're, you're not allowed to just destroy artwork, even if you own it, because it's considered a cultural... You know, everyone kind of... You're just like the proprietor, I guess, or I mean, yeah, it's like you can't buy a, a, a you know a protected building and just knock it down. Yeah, but like it. Oh, I mean, I mean, you have to hope that he did a bait and switch there, where it was a fake page, right? 
Like, you, you know, like that'd, be, that'd be fairly easy to do. Well, even if it was, okay, he's this is a rock and a hard place because if he did it, well, he's already broken one law. But if he faked it, well, that's fraud. So you've broken a completely different law. I mean, fraud. He didn't get it. As far as I can see, he got no fiscal reward from doing no, this. No, so he, 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 he made NFTs of it. Right. To sell like, the NFTs by making them more valuable because the originals destroyed. Okay. Yeah, I guess that could be fraud. So, th but. so there's like, there's, there's choose your own adventure. It's. <sighs> Either way. Fuck this guy. I don't. I, I just, the way they w word things, I don't know what is wrong. What is wrong with NFT people's brains? And like, this will revolutionize. Shit and magic oh, and Spain abused women because I burned a drawing to sell imaginary drawings on the internet on the blockchain. Ooh. Like, what the fuck Neverland did y'all ass grow up in? Because it wasn't here. It your brain is just not working. Yeah, your brain is bad. For real, this is yeah. Uh, Jedi and Channel says for real, this is actually Mexican Martin Skrull. Yeah. Kinda. I screw my head off. My husband's asleep. Like I, you know, I. It's it's always a tragedy when a irreplaceable piece of art by you know an artist who is no longer with us is destroyed. But it's like doing it in the name of NFTs. Okay, all right. Mariona in the channel says, uh, "Miss Martin, who has sold the drawing twice, said that she had never heard of Mister Mubarak, let alone sold on the drawing, and the entire saga was quote creepy." So it looks like it was fake. I mean, the guy can still go to jail, but thank yeah, I God. Mean, what the, all right, what did you think was going to fucking happen here? If you did it for real, jail. If you did it for fake, jail. I mean, NFT bros, you know, they're a special kind of person. You can't go back and reload. <laughs> it's not like fucking Skyrim and some shit. You're like, oh, I'm going to start some shit with this giant. You go back 10 minutes. You're like, ah, I'm fine now. No, that's not how that. No. Oh, God, that was the most traumatic five minutes of my life. Well, he's still an asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, fuck this guy. But for just thank God he... <laughs> He's just, thank God he's a lying asshole instead of a fucking straight up monster. You know what I mean? Still, you gotta, the thing about, you gotta wonder if, if, if this sort of shit's gonna be like, hey, I can do that. I'll do it for real, make even more money. I, I mean, what is with these people? It sucks that he's making NFTs out of her artwork in the first place, let alone, like, even if he's not destroying it. And like, it doesn't even have, the, doesn't have any sort of, any sort of rights to it. Nothing. Which is, So the first thing we learned this week is NFTs not even once. Uh, just it, brain worms. Do do NFTs a negative figures amounts of times? Yeah. <laughs> like somehow go back in time to yeah, not do your them life even harder. Way. Yeah, live your life in a way that will some will result in less NFTs in the world somehow. Just as everyone's. Common goal now is just, you know, live your best life in a way that will be detrimental to NFTs. Um, we have learned that uh, reading comprehension really is a power. It's like a superpower because so many people do not seem to possess it. It's, you know, I'm still not entirely unconvinced that this, this is not like a, a, a cult of anti bridge. Extremists. I, the first know? thing I think of is the, the fucking Garfield meme. I wonder who that's. that's this... <laughs> yep. Or the uh, the Arthur one. It's like uh, this doesn't apply to me because I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's this. Yeah. Um, we have learned that uh, what's more important than outright rank racism is the football season getting canceled. America. America. That's um, all the punishment you need is you don't get to play sports ball for a bit. If you do a racism, no more sports ball for you, young man. We have learned that if you're going to embezzle 
from a bank, if you're going to steal money from a bank, maybe don't work at the bank and put your name on all of the crime. Is you keeping a wrecking a record of a motherfucking criminal conspiracy? Yeah, don't sign your crimes. Just as a general rule, do not write your name onto the crime. It's it's it it, it I mean you have to think about it. Law enforcement gets so much money. The least you can do is make them fucking work for it. And finally we've learned that uh the, the, the lie of the meritocracy just because you are actually running a company and you're very you've you've collected your little dragon horde um does not mean you are a very good or smart individual yep i i i, I sometimes i sit and i think you know if i just prep myself i could i could be I, i'm just waiting for the day where we're at the pitchfork and, and, and torches phase. I'm just going to have a pallet of them out back and just be ready. Just be like, oh, who you know? Yep. Can, uh... Yeah, that's, that's, that if, if there's going to be a guillotining, I say the, this motherfucker. Pretty high on the list. There's, there's just, it's. Why is it like this? We could we could raise the guillotine on a chain that we call the blockchain. It's funny. <laughs>